Hello everybody, uh, Brenton Kage here, and today I've decided to take a page out of the fellow YouTuber Sips of the Yazcast book by doing a little story time. Now what he pretty much did is decide to just read a book out of Skyrim, and I decided I'm going to do with that. So today we're going to read A Game at Dinner. This isn't a Let's Play... Oh. <laughs> Should have... Let's just put that back in, and yeah, this is not a let's play, this is just me reading the book, so just sit back, relax, close your eyes, enjoy the story. <clears throat> a Game at Dinner by an Anonymous Spy Foreword from the Publisher The history behind this letter is almost as interesting and as dark as the story it tells. The original letter to the mysterious Dahani, eh? It was copied and began circulating around the Ashlands of Vivendell a few months ago. In time, a print found its way to the mainland, and Prince Hana ah, stop that. And Prince Hananu knew Kilsef. Prince Han Hanonu Helisef's palace outside of Alimaxria. While the reader may conclude after reading this letter that the prince would be furious about such a work, Eric impugned his highness with great malevolence. Quite the reverse was true. The prince and his mother, the queen Berenzai, had it privately printed into bound copies and sent to libraries and booksellers throughout Morrowind. As a matter of record, the prince and queen have not officially stated whether this letter is a work of pure imagination or based on actual occurrences. The house dresses publicly denounced the work, and indeed, no one named Dryanane, despite the suggestion in the letter, has ever been linked to the house. We leave the reader to interpret the letter as he or she believes. Neris Gan, publisher. Dark Liege, Derrand. You asked for a detailed experience of Rians last night and the reasons for my plea to House Dres for another assignment. I hope I have served you well in my capacity as as informant in the court of Prince Halish, a man who I have stated in many previous reports could teach Mullen Ball how to scheme. Ugh. One second. Anyway, I'm sorry about that, and great. Uh, I lost my place. Ah. Uh. Please forgive me for losing my place. Anyway. Ahem. Alright. Ahem. A man who I have stated in many previous reports could teach Mullen Ball how to scheme. As you know, I have spent nearly a year now, now working my way into his inner circle of advisors. He was in need of friendship when he first arrived in Morrowind and eagerly took to me and a few other others. Still, he was disinclined to trust any of us, which is perhaps not surprising, given his tenuous position in Morrowind society. For your unholiness's recollection, the prince is the eldest son of Baranza, who was once the queen of Morrowind and once the queen of, high, of, the, of the High Rock Kingdom of Wayrest. As the death of her husband, Prince Heli's stepfather, King Edwire, there was a power struggle between the prince and Edwin's Edwire's daughter, the Princess Elisana. Though details of what transpired are imperfect, it is clear that Elisana won the battle and became queen, banishing Helsef and Berenza, Berenza's only other child, Morgia had already left the court to marry and became queen of Somerset Isles and Kingdom of Bursold. <clears throat> Baron Zaya and Helseth crossed the continent to return to Morwen and only uh, return to Morwen only last year. They were well received by Baron Zaya's uncle, our current king, Halalu Lu Asthin Letheon, who has taken the throne after Baron Zaya's as abdication more than 40 years ago. Berenza made it clear that she had no design on reclaiming the throne. 
but merely to retire to her family estate. Helseph, as you know, has lingered in the royal court, and many have whispered that while he has lost the throne to Wayrest, he does not intend to lose the throne to Morrowind at Lathan's death. I have kept your unholiness informed of the prince's movements, meetings, and plots, as well as the names of the characters of his other advisors. As you may recall, I have often thought that I was not the only spy in Helseth's court. I told you before that a particular Dunmer counselor of Helseth looked like a fellow I have seen in the company of Thaler Saurai, the archcanon of the tribunal temple. Another, a young Nord woman, has been verified to visit the imperial fortress in Ba Moria. Of course, in their case, they might have been on Helseth's own business, but I couldn't be certain. I had begun to think myself paranoid, paranoid as the prince himself, oh, when I found myself doubting the sincere loyalty of the prince's chamber, Lane Burgess, a Breton who had been in his employ since his days in the court of Wayrest. That is the background on that last, that night, last night. Yesterday morning I received a curt invitation to dine with the prince. Based on my own paranoia, I dispatched one of my servants, who is a good and loyal servant of the house, dressed to watch the palace and report back anything unusual. Just before dinner, he returned and told me what he had witnessed. A man cloaked in rags had been, been entered to the palace and had stayed there for some time. When he left, my servant saw his face beneath the cloak. An alchemist of infamous repute said to be a leading supplier of exotic poisons. A fine observer, my servant, also knows that the alchemist entered the palace smelling of wickweed, bitter green, and something alien and sweet. When he left, he was odorless. He had come to the same conclusion as I did. The prince has pro had procured ingredients to repair po a poison. Bitter green alone is deadly when eaten raw, but the other ingredients su suggested something deeper. As your holiness can doubtless imagine, I went to dinner that night prepared for any eventuality. All of Prince Hellswift's other counselors were in attendance, and I noticed that all were slightly apprehensive. Of course, I imagined that I was in a nest of spies, and all knew of the prince's mysterious meeting. It is just as likely that some knew of the alchemist's visits, while others were simply concerned by the nature of the prince's invitation. And still, others merely inconspicuously adopted the tense disposition of their fellow, the better informed counselors. <clears throat> the prince, however, was in fine metal and soon had everyone relaxed and at ease. At nine, we were all ushered to his dining hall where the feast had been laid out. And what a feast! Honey, gore apples, world's fragrant stews, roasts and various blood sauces, and every variety of fish and fowl expertly and ostentatiously prepared. Crystal and gold flagons of wine, flying, a flin, shine, and mazette were at our seats to be savored as appropriate with each course. As tantalizing as the aromas were, it occurred to me that such a maze of spices and flavors, a discreet poison could be undetectable. Throughout the meal, I maintained the illusion of eating the food and drinking the liquor, but I was surprised. I was super tentious, and I swallowed nothing. Finally, the plates of food were cleared from the table, and a turrend of spicy broth was placed in the center of the banquet. The servant who brought it then retired, closing the banquet door behind him. It smells divine, my prince, said the marchioness Ragor, the Nord woman. But I cannot eat another thing. I guess I didn't check to see if I was a woman. My bad. Your Highness, I added, feigning a tone of friendliness and slight intoxication, you know that everyone at this table would gladly die to put you on the throne of Morwen. But is it really necessary we gorge ourselves to death? The others at the table have agreed with a prince. Should you have groans? The prince, Helef, smiled. I swear by Vernamia, by, no, by Vernirma, the gifter, my dark liege, and even you have never seen a smile such as this one. Ironic words, you see, an alchemist visited me today, as some of you already doubtless know. He showed me how to make a marvelous poison as antidote. A most potent poison, excellent for 
my purposes. No restoration spell will aid you once you have ingested it. Only the antidote in the terrine will save you from certain death. And what a death I have heard. I'm eager to see the effects. Eager to see if the effects are all that the alchemist promised. It should be horribly painful for the afflicted, but quite entertaining. No one said a word. I could feel the heart, my heart beating hard in my chest. Your Highness, said all, all the rat. The Dunmer, I suspected, in alliance with the temple. Have you poisoned someone at this table? You are very astute, Alarap, said Prince Helseth, looking around about the table, eyeing each of his advisors carefully. Little wonder I value your counsel, as indeed I value all in this room. It would be perhaps easiest for me to say who I haven't poisoned. I haven't poisoned any who serve but one master. Any whose loyalty to me is sincere, I haven't poisoned. Any person who wants to see King Helseth on the throne to Morrowind. I haven't poisoned anyone who isn't a spy for the Empire, the Temple, the House of Telvanni, the House of Redoran, the House of Indori, and the House of Dress. Your Holiness, Your Holiness, he looked directly at me at his last words. I know that, is, that in certainty my face is practiced at keeping my thoughts from showing, but I immediately thought of every secret meeting I've had, every coded message I sent to you in the house, my dark liege. What could he know? What could he, even without knowing, suspect? I felt my heart beating even faster. Was it fear or poison? I couldn't speak, certain as I was, my voice would betray my calm facade. Those loyal to me who wish harm on my enemies may be wondering how I can be certain that the poison has been ingested. Is it possible that the guilty party, or dare I say parties, were suspicious and merely pretended to eat and drink tonight? Of course, but even the craftiest pretenders would have to raise a glass to his or her lips and put empty forks or spoon in their mouth to play the charade. The food, you see, was not poisoned. The cups and, cult and cutlery were. If you did not partake out of fear, you're just... You are poisoned just the same and sadly missed an excellent rose. Sweat beaded on my face and I turned from the prince so he could not see. My fellow advisors, all of them, were frozen in their seat. From Marchioness Ralgar, white with fear, to Renma, to Kenma Inbe, visibly shaking from the pharaoh's angry brows of Alrat to the statue-like stare of Burgess. I couldn't help thinking that could the prince's entire councilorship be compromised of nothing but spies? Was there any person at the table loyal? But then I thought, what if I were not a spy my if what if I were not a spy myself? Would I trust Helsef to know that? No one knows better than his advisors both the depths of the prince's paranoia and the utter implicity of his ambition. If I were not a spy to the House of Dress, even then would I be safe. Could a loyalist be poisoned because of the not of a not so innocent misjudgment? The others must have been thinking the same, loyalists and spies alike. While my mind whirled, I could hear the prince's voice addressing all assembled. The poison acts quickly. If the antidote is not taken within one minute from now, there will be death at this table. I couldn't decide whether I had been poisoned or not. My stomach ached, but I reminded myself it might have been the result of sitting at a scrumptious banquet and not partaking. My heart shook in my chest, and a bitter taste like trauma root stung my lips. Again, was it fear or poison? These are the last words you will hear if you are lo disloyal to me, said the prince. Said Prince Hilsef, still smiling that the that damned smile as he watches advisors squirming in their seat. Take the antidote and live. Could I believe him, I thought? Could I believe him? I thought of what I knew of the prince and his character. Would he kill a self-confessed spy at his court? Or would he rather send the vanquished back to his master? The, the prince was ruthless, but either possibility was within his manner 
surely the theatric, the theatrically, theatre, the theatric let. Surely the theatrics of this whole dinner was meant to be a presentation to instill fear. What would my ancestors say if I joined them after sitting at the table, eventually dying of poison? What would they say if I took the if I took the antidote, confessing my allegiance to you and the house dress, and was so, and was similarity, and was then executed? And I confess, I thought of what you might do to me, even after I was dead. I had grown so lightheaded and filled with my own thoughts that I didn't see the he Fergus jumped from his seat. I was only aw I was only suddenly aware that he had the terrine in his hands and was gulping down the liquid within. There were guards all around me, though I never noticed them entering. Fergus said Prince Helsef, still smiling. You have spent some time at Ghost Gate House, Rhetoran. You didn't know? The Fergus laughed sourly. <laughs> no house. I report to your stepsister, the Queen of Wayrets. I've always been in her employ. By Akatosh, you poisoned me because I thought I was working for some damnable dark elf? You're half right, said the prince. I didn't guess who you were working for, or even that you were a spy. But you're also wrong about me poisoning you. You poisoned yourself when you drank from the terrine. Your Holiness, you d Your Holiness, you don't need to hear how Burgess dies. I know you have seen much over the many year, many, many years of your experience, of your existence, but you truly do not want to know. I wish I could erase the memories of his agonies from my own mind. The council was dismissed shortly thereafter. I do not know if Prince Helsef knows or suspects that I too am a spy. I do not know how many others last there's that night last night were as close as I from drinking the terrine before Burgess did. I only know that if the prince does not suspect me now, he cannot win at the games he mastered long ago at the court of Wayrest. And I beg your unholiness, my dark liege to mine, to use your influence in house stress and dismiss your loyal servant from this charge. Publisher's note. Of course the anonymous letter signature has not been in any reprint of the letter since the original. So, that was the story. Quite an interesting twist at the end, I must say. So, like, subscribe, and let me know if you wish for me to read any more stories. I got plenty on the book show. As always, I'm Brenton Kage, and I will see you later.